and it's just like, it doesn't make any sense. So I, I got older, I got more mature, and I moved on to tidy whities because I was like, this is, <laughs> this is what grown-ups do, you know? And, uh, <clears throat> and then I went for, through a little phase where I was experimenting with box, what's known as the boxer brief, which is sort of like a tidy whitey, but it's longer like a boxer, and it sort of gives you the feeling that you're still youthful, but you're, but you're basically an aging person. And, <laughs> but the problem is I have like really big legs, and so I would find that if they were the wrong length, they would roll up and become like this weird little like, rolled up bikini on me. So I need to get the, the, so now what I do is basically I wear like very long boxer briefs most of the time um, that are essentially like wearing long underwear under my pants and uh, I'm extremely sweaty all the time. Because, <laughs> so I'm actually glad that you brought this up because I should, I should reevaluate my underwear philosophy. Um, but I should tell you another thing. Richard Spate Jr. Not the, the senior. Um, okay, this is what happened. So, I, I spilled soup on myself in my trailer on the set of Supernet. I was It was lunchtime, I was wearing my Castiel wardrobe, and I spilled soup on myself. And I, what? Smooth move, Smooth move, thank you. So I spilled soup, and I spilled, it enough, I spilled enough soup on myself that I had to take my underwear off. Um, I had to take off all of my clothes, and I had to take off my underwear. I got a new I, wardrobe, brought me a new set of clothes, and I left my underwear, I guess, on the floor or something like that. And the wardrobe, uh, uh, Kelly from Costumes came and scooped up all the clothes, including the underwear, went back, washed them, and then she was like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Orange underwear bright orange underwear. And she brought them to the only obvious answer, which was to Richard Spate. She was like, <laughs> and left them in his trailer, like, Richard, yep, you're, there's your underwear. <laughs> and, uh, and then Richard came out like, what the fuck is going on? Like, who's leaving under underwear in my trailer? You know, it's not cool. So to this day, this was five, six, seven years ago. It was a long, long time ago. In the AD trailer, uh, my underwear are, are hung up on the wall. <laughs> and this led to a whole thing where, oh, Richard Spate said that like, Misha wears orange underwear and the people mailed me orange underwear. <laughs> and then I had like this embarrassment. Well, even a single pair is an embarrassment of orange underwear, but I had a really embarrassing embarrassment of, of orange underwear. And for some reason, it has now become a thing for me, and it's like a good luck thing, and I only wear orange underwear. <laughs> I actually don't know if that's true. I, I, I want to confirm. Yeah. That's the first time I've ever uh, auto wedgie myself. <laughs> Bet you didn't think I'd go on such a long tangent, did you? <laughs> Hi. Hi, Misha. Um, looks like I'm one of the rare demographic tonight, but I'm a huge fan. Always loved your performance, and my question is... What, what, what do you mean, like New Yorker? What is your demographic? Yeah, I'm a New Yorker. Yeah, that's what I thought. And a guy. Oh, yeah, that other thing, right. I guess that was kind of hard to miss. Um, um, how, many, uh, how many people uh, self-identify as guys? Yeah. Woo! That's a pathetic smattering, guys. <laughs> um, hi. And uh, my question is, is there anything either from your personal values or anything you experience in your own life that you've drawn upon in your performance as Castiel? Um, that's an excellent question. Um, well, I think from my personal life, when I was first thinking about the character, I kind of um, 
there was something about uh, my brother that I drew on for Castiel. There's some, my brother can have this very um, ethereal quality, like he can kind of look at you and it feels like he's looking through you or something. Um, and there's a certain like, intensity to him sometimes. And so that's from my personal life and I drew on it for, for the creation of Castiel. Um, I also, I also, and you can sort of see it right here in that picture right there. Um, sometimes when I'm portraying Cass, I, I just run the filter, like a, the thought through my head of, what's that smell? Yes. That someone made you disturbingly aware of all your ums and uhs and word fillers. I don't do that anymore, though. I'm pretty sure you did a couple times. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, can you try to go to the rest of this panel without using ums or uhs? Nope. <laughs> that was a uh, truly. That was ah uh, truly is what I was saying there. Just the uh, ah got stuck in my throat. <laughs> It was a truly horrific experience for me because they pointed out, somebody pointed out to me that I... <laughs> am very inarticulate and I became painfully aware of how often I say um and ah uh when I'm searching for words. And it really derailed an entire convention panel. So thank you for bringing up that traumatic experience. <laughs> there's a app. There's an app online uh, that that. Uh, that that removes all of the words and leaves just the breaths and the filler sounds, the ums, the ahs, the ers, and the uh, inhales. And there appears to be a direct correlation between the number of ums and ers and ahs and how stupid the person talking is. <laughs> um, there you go. <laughs> Uh, thing that happened. <laughs> I, 